Hi, I'm Bob Tabor with www.learnvisualstudio.net and in this lesson we're going to talk about the canvas layout control as well as shapes. Now they're not inextricably tied together but you'll see that they are complementary ideas. We're dealing with absolute placement of controls on a design surface. So typically in layout of Windows applications we do not want to, uh, to have absolute layout or absolute positioning because if we resize the application we would have to either do a lot of math to factor out where things should be or um, we are really just limiting the form factors that can consume our application. So uh, typically you wouldn't use this in any applications that you typically would see installed in Windows, but there are some use cases, some scenarios where I thought this would be helpful. So in the interest of making sure you have a pretty broad knowledge, uh, maybe perhaps not all that deep, but a broad knowledge of, of your options with building applications, I wanted to cover both the canvas and different shapes. So you might need to build apps that deal with music, musical staffs, musical notation, or perhaps uh, applications that deal with math and you need symbols and you need lines and you need things in different places. Uh, you know, math can get kind of hairy um, with uh, formulas and where they're placed. Uh, analog clocks, so that you can create uh, different angles for lines and things of that nature. E even a diagram application or a drawing application, perhaps you want to create two symbols and then draw a line between them and that it has some meaning inside of your particular industry or even applications that deal with bar readers uh, or create bars for scanners. All, right. All of those are good scenarios for working with both the canvas and with shapes. Okay, so uh, the first thing I want to talk about is the line shape. And the line is pretty simple. It doesn't need to be put inside of a canvas at all. You can put it inside of a grid and you can see here what we get as a result of that. Here we're putting it inside of the default cell. We're just specifying the X and Y um, per, uh, the X and Y coordinates for the beginning and the end. So here's the beginning point x equals 10 and y equals 10. So that gives us this leftmost corner here. And then the second point would be x is 200, y equals 10. So that's going to give us a nice vertical line because the y's don't change, only the x values. That gives us that point here uh, on the right hand side. You can see that we set the stroke equals black and the stroke thickness equals to 5 and then we also set the stroke and line cap equal triangle. There's a couple of different options here. Um, you can see that we can create a flat round square or triangle and let me scroll uh, actually just go to 100 here and you can see by choosing triangle we get that little arrowhead on the end. Okay. So like I said uh, we can actually uh, we don't need grids, uh, I'm sorry, a canvas in order to create uh, various uh, line objects and add them to our application. As you can see here, I create a triangle by adding three more lines and making sure that they intersect at just the right spot, making sure that they're the start line cap uh, is set to round and that the stroke end line cap is set to round so that they have a nice rounded appearance on the corners and they come together nicely. Okay. Now, I did want to talk about the canvas because the line, you can see that we're doing absolute placement by choosing an XY coordinate. Uh, if we were to change this to canvas, nothing about the line changes, but now we'll be able to give that same treatment uh, to any other control by using uh, an attached property syntax. Okay, so um, let's recreate first of all before we go further here uh, this triangle using a different type of object. Instead of th using three line objects, we can just create a polyline object. Here you can see that I'm setting. I am using attached properties actually to set the left and the top of the polyline, and then I cr start creating a series of points. Uh, so x y pairs that define the various points of my triangle. And then I can even set the fill color for my polyline if it all joins together. But notice that I'm placing this entire polyline here at 150 left 
zero top. So everything now, all these points are relative to that position that I define here. Okay. Next, just to kind of emphasize the, um, the absolute placement of items here, I'm creating a text block and I'm setting its canvas.left and canvas.top to 50 and 150 respectively. And so we can put anything, not just shapes, any control inside of a canvas for absolute placement. All right, and then we talked about, uh, I think we've used the rectangle in the past. Let's go ahead and use the rectangle here and I'll add it to another example. So here I have just a yellow rectangle, um, again, setting the canvas top, uh, attach property and the left to zero, the height and the width, and I fill it with uh, the color yellow. And you'll notice that I have this Z index property and that'll allow me to talk about uh, the last thing that we wanna discuss here. Uh, with regards to the canvas. And the canvas allows you to place items um, on top of each other, but define uh, which ones will come, you know, if you were to stack them up and you were to look at them kind of in a different perspective, what would the stack be? So which one is visible first? In this case, I set the Z index of the ellipse to 150 and the Z index of the yellow rectangle to 100. If I change that, you can see that by changing the Z index to 15, it puts the yellow rectangle um, on top of the, uh, of the ellipse. So we are talking in terms of X and Y coordinates, but also there's a Z coordinate in 3D space. And so the Z index will set that stacking order uh, for you. So just be aware of that. Okay, that's really all I wanted to say about Canvas and the various shapes that are available. You can combine these in interesting ways to pretty much represent anything that you can imagine uh, if you need to draw shapes in your application. So hopefully that's helpful. I think they mostly have, all, all of them have uh, uh, like click or tapped. Um, yeah, uh, so if you needed to respond to touch uh, or click, you would use the tapped event. Uh, to uh, to handle that event if the user were to try to interact with that given shape as well. Okay, so that's all I wanted to say about the canvas for absolute placement, and then the uh, the shapes for um, special use cases where you need to draw on your application. All right, hopefully that was helpful. We'll see you in the next lesson. Thanks.